Today we're going to calculate how far my Tesla and other electric powered vehicles can go with various size solar arrays. So first we're going to start with a small 100 watt panel and see how far my Tesla and my e-bike and other electric powered vehicles can go. And then we're going to compare it to my solar shed that has 540 watts. And then we're going to compare it to my house array that has 4.5 kilowatts. So let's get started. This is a 100 watt monocrystalline solar panel and for most latitudes and most weather conditions in America you can expect to get five hours of full power at STC or standard test condition. So we can say that this panel can produce 500 watt hours a day. I can actually produce 600 or 700 watt hours because I live in Las Vegas. And but for this comparison we're just going to go with 500 watt hours. Now let's figure out how far this car can go with 500 watt hours. This is the Model 3 Performance 2020 and compared to my Model S this is a lot more efficient and if you don't drive like an idiot you can actually go a single mile with 250 watt hours. So that means that you can go two miles with that single solar panel which is pretty impressive but we're not counting the charging losses, but they are pretty small. And if you have a lithium battery and the round trip efficiency is 98%, you should be able to get two miles with that single solar panel. But just think about that for a second. We're powering a 3000 pound car for two whole miles with a solar panel that's this big. That's incredible. Now let's compare it to my e-bike. This is actually a 500 watt hour battery. So that means you can go 30 to 40 miles with a single 100 watt solar panel. But that's incredible. Being able to pull my fat butt up a mountain for 30 to 40 miles and it only takes one single solar panel to do it. That's awesome. Now this is where it gets crazy. This is a 150 watt hour pack and it can go 27 miles. You could go 94 miles with this scooter. And these are rideshare scooters. I haven't made a video about them. Big Battery is selling them. I'll have a link below. So this isn't the sexiest electric vehicle around, but I love it. And I have no idea how big the battery is. So give me a second. This is a 155 watt hour battery. So 155 divided by 500 gives you 3.2. Now multiply that times 11. 35 miles that you can ride this dorky little scooter. That's pretty incredible. Now we're going to compare my solar shed and this has 540 watts on the roof. That means we can produce 2.7 kilowatt hours with this little shed. And currently I'm upgrading this for 18 kilowatt hours of storage and with split phase output so that we can speed charge the Tesla at level two. That means instead of waiting for 24 hours for the Tesla to charge, I can charge it with this entire bank in about three and a half hours. So this is an actually realistic charging option that you don't have to wait around for. Now if we assume 250 watt hours per mile, if you're not driving like an idiot. Let's divide that by 2,700. You can go 10.8 miles with the power generated by the solar shed. Isn't that incredible? So that means if the grid went down, I would still be able to drive my car 10.8 miles a day. Here in Las Vegas, because it's so sunny, I could actually do that in more, possibly 12, even 13 miles a day. In a single day of sunshine with the solar shed, I could charge this 5.4 times. So let's multiply that by 30. And that gives us 162 to 216 miles a day. This scooter can recharge 18 times. Let's multiply that by 27. That means we can go 486 miles. That's incredible. And this thing we can recharge 17 times. So let's multiply that by 11. We have 191 miles. Now let's compare my home solar power system, which is a 4.5 kilowatt array. And this on average is supposed to only produce 22.5 kilowatt hours if we assume five hours of sunshine a day. But I can actually produce 27 to 33 kilowatt hours here in Las Vegas. But for comparison's sake, to make it fair, let's go with 22.5 kilowatt hours. The 22,500 divided by 250 gives you 90 miles if you do not drive like an idiot. If you like to race it around a lot, I would say that you're going to get like 60 miles per day. But that's incredible. I only drive this like 20 miles per day, so it's plenty. And the best number I've seen during winter is 32 kilowatt hours. So let's calculate that out real quick. And that gives us 128 miles. Let me check back with you guys soon because I'm gonna upgrade this solar power system with a larger array. 
and it will be summertime here in Las Vegas. So I'm hoping I can get like 150, maybe 170 miles for free a day. And that's the theoretical maximum limit, but I need to use my solar power for other things in the house. I live alone though, so most of my power, like 90% of my power goes to this car. And with this bicycle, we can charge it 45 times. So let's multiply that by 30. We can get 1,350 miles with my home array every single day with this bike. We can get 150 recharges, so let's multiply that by 27. 4,050 miles a day for this scooter. We get 145 recharges times it by 11. 1,596 miles for this dorky scooter. Isn't that incredible, guys? My home solar power system can power all of these vehicles all the time. The only problem is that with the grid tie system, if the grid were to go down, which is very unlikely, I wouldn't be able to use that massive solar array on my house. But I know that the solar shed can safely power all of my vehicles, including my Tesla, just for like basic necessities. And it's nice to have that option. Also, I can add tons of solar panels to my backyard if there was actual emergency situation. I would make that about a 2000 watt array instantly. And then I would be able to power this Tesla all day long, more than I would ever need actually. Now let's compare my bicycle because technically this is solar powered. I eat food and calories from photosynthesis and this extracts that energy from the chemical bonds or the energy stored in those bonds. And this is actually pretty inefficient. I'm sure we could actually do the math for the calories and how much heat. But the process going from photosynthesis, storage, and then moving the food, and then for me to eat it, um, electric vehicles are much more efficient than this. And I used to think that a bicycle was cheaper than electric vehicles, but if you calculate how much more food I need to buy for me to run this bicycle all the time, because I used to do like 20 miles a day when I was younger, um, it's pretty darn expensive. So you're actually better off getting an electric bike with a small solar panel array. Now let's imagine we have four 100 watt solar panels and times it by five, you'll get 2000 watt hours. So even if you have a small array with a small cheap solar generator, you can power an e-bike for at least 100 miles a day, which is incredible and super cheap. But it really depends on how good your weather conditions are for solar. For me, I'm going to pass all of these numbers and produce a lot more power. If you live in England, you're not. If you live in Canada, absolutely not. But for most people in the United States, you absolutely can power electric vehicles with small arrays, and it's very easy to do. Whether you have a plug and play system or you have an advanced solar shed with split phase output, you can power all of these vehicles. I can power my Tesla, e-bike, everything. I built all of these systems in my backyard, so I'm pretty sure you guys can do it too. And soon we're gonna actually put this to the test. We are going to calculate how much I produce with my solar shed, and then we're gonna charge up the Tesla, but that will be for a future video that I'm working on. It will have 18 kilowatt hours of storage, so I can't wait to show you guys. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video, and I will talk to you later. Bye.